As the USS Fanning, Paulding class destroyer, was sailing the waters of the Atlantic on November 17, 1917, Coxman David Daniel Loomis, known for his unparalleled eyesight, shouted, Telescope. The German U 58 submarine had been surveilling the area for days, looking to attack a powerful enemy formation. And when Captain Gustav Amberger spotted an Allied convoy coming their way, he ordered his crew to deploy their periscope to better outline the position of the enemy ships. To his shock, Amberger discovered that USS Fanning was practically on top of them, and after surveying just for a few minutes, he ordered the periscope to be submerged once again. The German captain was confident that they had gone undetected, but little did he know that the entire crew aboard Fanning was fervently mobilizing to maneuver the ship and align her depth charges to where Loomis had spotted the U-boat. An aggressive strategy. By the closing months of 1916, Germany was becoming desperate to end the war. Thanks to the enormous naval advantage provided by their mighty U-boats, they had successfully deprived Britain of many supplies and materials. However, Britain proved to be a force to be reckoned with, and the war's end was uncertain. Still, Grand Admiral Henning Rudolf Adolf Karl von Holzendorf was confident that his U-boats could end the war in six months if they could conduct unrestricted submarine warfare. Until now, U-boat encounters had been limited by the so-called prize rules restrictions that forced an attacking ship to allow all the crew and passengers of a defeated vessel to leave their boat and reach a safe position before the aggressor could sink or capture their ship. Holzendorf was sure that if they conducted unrestricted naval warfare, they would overwhelm Britain, effectively starving it and forcing it to sue for peace. He also knew that such an aggressive strategy would undoubtedly draw the U.S. into the war, but hoped it would be over before that happened. When pitching his daring scheme to the Kaiser, Holzendorf assured that even if the U.S. could miraculously deploy troops before Britain surrendered, his U-boats would sink any transport ship before any troops could land, going as far as promising, quote, not one American would land on the continent. Following the Grand Admiral's advice, the German High Command opted to take submarine combat to the next level by conducting an unrestricted war strategy to cut out Britain's supply lines once and for all. Initially, the plan went ahead just as Holzendorf envisioned it. Britain's supply lines were abruptly strangled, and resources arriving at the British Isles became sparse. Germany successfully sank over 25% of all ships heading to Britain during the first months of 1917. However, Holzendorf's prediction also came true. Germany's aggressive naval tactics shocked the world, and the U.S. joined the war in April. The Americans were promptly informed of the German U-boat threat, and in response, the Triple Entente decided that the best course of action would be to establish a convoy system to maintain the supply lines to Britain. Incidentally, the British had long avoided the idea of convoys, as they believed an escort system would further delay shipments, but they eventually complied. Getting into position. The novel convoy system greatly benefited from the addition of U.S. destroyers to its escort formations. Still, despite the novel Mark II depth charges brought by the U.S. Navy and the remarkable patrol efforts implemented by American destroyers, by November 1917, seven months after the U.S. Navy joined the war efforts, U.S. ships were yet to confirm a single U-boat hit. Amid the U.S. destroyers joining the war effort in the Atlantic was USS Fanning, an older modified Paulding-class destroyer, ill-fitted for submarine warfare, except for the Mark II depth charges it carried. On the foggy morning of November 17th, USS Fanning was assigned to escort a convoy outbound from Queenstown, Ireland, alongside six U.S. destroyers and two British cruisers. The harbor was guarded by anti-submarine netting, which meant the Allied ships had to exit in a single-file line at a particular spot where there was no netting, and then assume convoy formation once they reached 10 miles off the harbor. This maneuvering put the convoy in a vulnerable position to a submarine attack. However, the convoy that USS Fanning was escorting was particularly vulnerable at this moment because, unbeknownst to them, one of the feared U-boats was already pursuing the ships. U-58 was a Type 57 diesel-powered torpedo attack boat commanded by German officer Gustav Amberger. The U-boat had already proved itself highly effective in battle, sinking a total of 25 ships during its service in the First Battle of the Atlantic. Amberger knew the Allied convoy was due to depart from Queenstown and had been patiently waiting for it for days, going as far as ignoring other possible targets. When the convoy left the netted section of the harbor, the U-boat intercepted them and pursued them underwater. Amberger knew that this moment, where the escort ships were in disarray trying to position themselves to a protective formation, was the perfect time to strike. This would be the second time that Amberger would attempt to strike them. 
Earlier that day, he'd ordered the submarine to go up and deploy the periscope to see the exact position of the convoy. He then realized that U-58 was in a collision course with one of the U.S. destroyers and desperately ordered the engine to go astern, barely avoiding a collision. Now, for his second attempt, Amberger lifted the submarine to periscope level again as he wanted to locate one of the cargo ships and position the U-boat in line for a torpedo strike. As he peered through the periscope, he was surprised to realize that the U-boat was dangerously close to USS Fanning, which was taking her position at the rear of the convoy. The U.S. destroyer was less than 400 yards away from the U-boat and coming in fast, and Amberger immediately lowered the periscope. The German captain was sure the U-boat had gone undetected. After all, the submarine was fitted with what the Allies called a finger telescope, an extremely thin periscope that was very hard to detect. Furthermore, U-58 had been stationary, so the V-shaped waves left by a periscope in motion would not have been readily visible. However, the German commander was not counting on the legendary sight of coxswain David Daniel Loomis, who, despite the fog, spotted the tiny periscope seconds before it submerged and alerted everyone aboard USS Fanning. The American crew immediately assumed combat positions and started maneuvering the ship to align its rear to the submarine's last known location to drop its depth charges. Amberger, suspecting something was wrong due to the abrupt motions of the U.S. ship, ordered to submerge lower at once, but his troubles were just about to begin. Uncertainty. The crew aboard the Fanning reacted swiftly, and as soon as the ship was in position, the men dropped one of their depth charges. Unfortunately, the explosive had activated too soon, and its blast reached Fanning, disabling her generator. Another of the escorting U.S. destroyers, USS Nicholson, quickly deployed another depth charge, and this one detonated at the proper depth. Then everything stopped, and the sailors became overwhelmed by a massive uncertainty. They had no way of knowing if any of the detonations had damaged the submarine. If the U-boat was unharmed, it could emerge for an attack, and the disabled USS Fanning was a sitting duck, unable to move after the first explosion. Also, after months of unsuccessful encounters with German U-boats, the Allies knew how difficult it was to spot a submarine. The chaos from the explosion eventually subsided, and USS Fanning was able to restore the generator, while USS Nicholson desperately patrolled the area, looking for any signs of a damaged U-boat. Still, there was nothing. Fifteen long minutes went by, and the sailors became discouraged. However, right below them, German Captain Amberger was facing the most challenging moments in his military career. The explosions had crippled his submarine's engines and disabled the diving system. U-58 was unable to move and slowly sinking. The clock was ticking, and the Germans only had two options, either sink and be squeezed by the water pressure, or rise and surrender. The U-boat was already below its depth limits when Amberger finally gave the order to surface. As it broke through the water's surface bow, first exposing its torpedo tubes, USS Nicholson dropped another depth charge, further damaging the embattled German vessel. USS Fanning and Nicholson then began to fire their guns just before the submarine's main hatch opened to reveal Amberger, hand raised, surrendering to the Allies. A Civil Capitulation the surrender procedure went by the book. The Allies stopped firing and allowed the German sailors to board USS Fanning. Most of the German sailors were exhausted and in dire need of food and medical attention. Some of the seamen even succumbed to exhaustion as they tried to swim from the U-boat to the American ship and had to be saved by US sailors. Amberger had strict orders not to allow Triple Entente forces to capture a German U-boat under any circumstances. So before exiting the damaged vessel, he ordered his sailors to go down and open the seacocks to sink the ship. The captain then turned himself and his officers over to the U.S. commander. He would later declare that they were treated much better than expected by the U.S. Navy. Still, they were sent to U.S. POW camps for the remainder of the war. The encounter would be the first time in history that the U.S. Navy successfully sank a submarine in battle and would pave the way for a successful counterpart to the U-boat campaign in the Atlantic. Thank you for watching our video. What do you think was Amberger's gravest mistake in his encounter with USS Fanning? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And to find more amazing history-inspired stories, don't forget to subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the notification bell. Stay tuned.